Good evening, everyone. How's it going out there? Welcome back here to a uh, Saturday night. Hope everyone's having a good weekend. It is 9.33 p.m. That's California time here. September 20th, 2025. Uh, latest activity shows some movement here across California lighting up here in the last couple hours. Had uh, even a number of three-pointers out here. Uh, one just uh, west of the Yosemite area and also an earthquake down there of a 3.1 outside of Coso Junction. The latest quake here, though, shows a 2.6 near the Lopez Point area along the coast there of California. So things are starting to light up out here. And normally when things are showing some elevated activity, that's the time that we need to be on guard. Uh, so watch the west coast out here. We're definitely uh, lighting up right now. Uh, a couple earthquakes there along the uh, creeping section of the San Andreas Fault. Still wa watching the uh, Parkfield section. Bay Area pretty quiet. Northern California, one earthquake this morning. It looks like a little 1.8. Pacific Northwest, really nothing uh, major going on up there. There's a little 0.8 around Mount St. Helens there. We'll check that out here in just a second. I do want to check out the uh, Cascadia slow slip events here real quick where, wow, definitely uh, up there once again at 410 epicenters of slow slip trimmers down into the Cascadia subduction zone. Also getting some up underneath the Vancouver Island ranges. Um, I think it's been a little while since we've seen that up there. Let's see. That looks like there was a little bit here in the last 30 days, but the majority of this uh, 6,112 trimmer counts were mainly down here across the southern end of the Cascadia subduction zone. So definitely uh, watching that closely. Real quick here across Mount St. Helens, we'll check out the seismograph station and see what's going on here. Everything's good. All right, a uh, little earthquake. That's very localized event there. Uh, when was that earthquake that they put out here? Looks like 11.30 this morning, just to the west here of Mount St. Helens. Let's see if we can find that at 11.30. So we need to go back here. Uh, 11.30, well, it's gonna be somewhere in here, but notice these well-defined spikes here. Uh, in the last 24 hours or so, definitely a number of them. It's been uh, a little bit on the uptick there across Mount St. Helens and also Mount Rainier here in the last couple months. Uh, I think Mount St. Helens has seen a little bit of deeper activity here on one of these graphs. I think it's this one right here. The amplitudes are well turned up, right? So you can see some of the earthquake activity that may be small in nature or may be deep in nature. And it does look like there's some deeper activity stirring up underneath Mount St. Helens. Um, I don't, well, let's go over and check real quick at the um, GPS measurements up there. See if anything's on the inflation side. See if anything's inflating, I should say, out there. Uh, there's Mount Rainier, Mount St. Helens. Uh, I'll just go up here at the summit. That's old, not gonna work for us. 2014, that does absolutely no good. This is recent. There's a, and that's right up at the dome area. Notice the downturn here. There's not a whole lot of inflation going on. Obviously, if that started to go back up, then we know that magma's coming up here. But right now, I just think it's some earthquake activity uh, down there, a, a decent distance. And uh, similar to Mount Rainier, we do need to uh, just keep an eye on him. Uh, some further activity in Nevada. Look at this earthquake right here, right off the San Andreas Fault. Oh, man, a lot of activity lighting up there in California right now. A couple of earthquakes around the oil fields of Texas. Really nothing going on there for the rest of the country. We've got a pretty good swarm of activity here across the Curl Camp Chatka Trench. A number of fives as well this evening, a 5.7, 5.2. Man, it just keeps coming. These earthquakes just keep, you know, whether you want to call them aftershocks or uh, earthquakes, we do need to watch it. I don't know if we're done yet. It almost seems like something's waiting here. Either the West Coast is going to pop or we're going to see some larger movement out here. Almost seems like it's a teeter-totter event where things are lighting up out there across the West Coast. And we do have potential in terms of larger movement, but we just haven't seen it yet. Um, we'll see how this plays out. We do got to be prepared. Some further activity there around the Nankai Trough as well. There's a couple earthquakes. There's a three-pointer there. It looks like around Section E 
I do want to double check the Japan Meteorological Agency here real quick, see what we have. A uh, number of earthquakes here around the adjacency of the Tokara Islands. That's where the uh, earthquake swarms taking place, and that's at the southwestern edge there of the Nankai Trough. Uh, the latest three-pointer is, uh, yeah, it looks like it's back there behind Section E. Um, let's see how deep that is. Magnitude, does it say the, uh, oh yeah, about 10 kilometers deep there or so. Either way, it's a it's a region around Japan that we need to watch closely because they, uh, uh, it, that subduction zone there, the Nankai Trough, is pretty well strained, and it's been a while since we've seen any activity on it. Still got a lot of activity down south, a lot of activity north, all pointing to this region right here, potentially. Not a whole lot of activity around the Mariana Trench or the Izu Trench for now. I'm, I can't uh, see this going much longer because it's at it's a it's a subduction zone here, uh, and all that strain that's been happening here across the north and south has to be affecting the middle point boundary. Uh, but it's possible could see some larger activity anywhere around this area of the Filipino plate. Uh, let's see what else we got here across the world view. Uh, New Zealand, some smaller quake activity. Nothing going on there for now. Pretty good trail of activity across the Java Trench and Papua New Guinea. Uh, but really nothing big. handful of earthquakes there across Turkey and even some up there in Italy. Where is that at? Is that in that uh, volcano field there? Let's go take a look here real quick. Um, up, no, well, there's a couple smaller earthquakes up here around the Naples area. This is the um, Campe Filigre volcanic field. A couple smaller earthquakes around the volcanoes. I don't see any uh, swarm going on. Just kind of curious to see where that larger activity is. Yeah, mostly smaller quakes there. Um, either way, it doesn't look like it's anything big. That four-pointer looks like it's north inland into the Italy area. 4.2 and a 3.2 there today. So we'll just keep an eye on things here. 1.2 up in Alaska right now. A lot happening out here. A lot of stress signs for sure. All right, space weather activity, not so much going on. Notice the sun's getting eclipsed right now. Um, this is from uh, the GOES-19. So I'm pretty certain that this is going to be Earth that is blocking this out every 24 hours or so depending on the location of where that uh, spacecraft is. But it does, um, you can see it a little bit better here on this solar flare chart. Well, maybe not on this one, but on Kevin's here, it blocks out every 24 hours and we're due right now again. So, But it doesn't look like any major solar flares going on. Pretty quiet there in terms of that. Uh, we do have coronal hole here, number 80 facing us. The arrival of the high-speed solar wind stream should come up here on the second or 22nd here, UTC time. That means uh, probably tomorrow night, it looks like. Uh, we'll watch well, tomorrow night, maybe even Monday sometime. Uh, I don't expect much, though, in terms of any uh, major Aurora show. Flare threat, uh, let's see what we got here. Really, uh, there's a couple regions back over here, some newer areas. The sun is definitely littered with a lot of sunspots out here. This is very active. But uh, looking at the complexity here of these sunspots, there's not a whole lot of uh, mag magnetically uh, complex ones. we got another area over here. Might be a little bit more complex. We'll have to watch that. Either way, uh, flare threat somewhat minimal. 35% chance there for an M flare. Uh, X flare around 5% chance or less. Uh, looking at the Storm Prediction Center, no major severe weather there in the next couple days. It does look like maybe on Monday, slight risk for some severe weather across Oklahoma, Texas, and uh, Oklahoma as well, but uh, we'll check back on that a little bit later. Uh, by the way, folks, the member drawing postponed that until Monday. I had a couple people email me asking if uh, I could postpone it. Uh, they wanted to jump in but didn't have the funds at the moment to become a member. So I went ahead and moved that to Monday. We'll take care of that on Monday. It's only two days, uh, so should be able to deal with that. Parkfield, a uh, little earthquake there. Let's see what that is. That's fairly recent. Is that going to be the uh, 
2147. I don't think it's that earthquake. 2140. Well, I guess that could be. Yeah, 2147 here, so. That's a 2.6. Either way, California is starting to light up, folks. Uh, just be on guard. We'll keep an eye on things. If anything major happens overnight, of course, we'll jump in here. Otherwise, we'll see you out here uh, for the Sunday morning update. Take care. Have a good night.